Hello there, I'm Graham Briggs with the Trimble Forensics team, and I'm here today to show you how to use Trimble Forensics Capture software and GNSS equipment to collect data at a crash scene, including ground control points for UAV photogrammetry. A quick overview of the scene will help you make more sense of what you will see in the demonstration today. This demonstration is based on a collision between a semi-truck and a car in the northbound lanes of I-5 near Conway, Washington. Many thanks to our friends at the Washington State Patrol, especially Detective Kevin Nelson, for sharing his field data from this scene. We will show you how Detective Nelson collected GNSS control points across the top of the overpass and then on the roadway level, using feature collection to collect the line work of the roadway, and then moving into the area of impact and collecting data on the skid mark locations and the final resting place of the tires of the two vehicles involved in the collision. When you roll up on a scene, grab your GNSS equipment and turn it on, and then open the capture software and click on the new scene button at the top left. Type in a name for this scene and choose the point code library that you'd like to use. Select your input method as GNSS and connect to your GNSS receiver. In this case, we're using our demo rover, which allows us to simulate data collection as it actually happened in the field. Click the Next button, and Capture Software will connect to the GNSS equipment. The next step is to put in your target height. Often with GNSS, you use a 2-meter fixed height pole. Capture allows you to type in that value as 2M, and it will automatically convert that to feet. Go ahead and hit Next. Now you're ready to establish the initial origin position of your scene. Type in a position that you'd like to observe. Usually 000 is a default. And click on the Next button here to begin measuring that point. Level up the pole over the point before you click Next. And we will begin to average a number of positions together to get a nice stable coordinate. When this counts down to zero, and we have enough positions for the coordinate, we will go ahead and advance to the next point. It's mandatory that you collect at least three GNSS control points as part of any scene setup. This will allow you to use them for optical total station setup as well as for GNSS ground control and UAV photogrammetry. So go ahead and move to your next GNSS control point, level the pole over the point, and click on the shot button. Again, we will be averaging 10 observations together to get a nice stable position, and when it's all good to go, the point will automatically be stored. We now move to our second control point location, and just like with an optical survey, you want to try to spread these out across the area of the survey with a nice wide triangle geometry. We've now collected our three control points and we are ready to begin measuring in the scene. You can see that we're starting our scene with our first three control points, which forms a nearly equilateral triangle around the area where we're going to collect data. Before we go ahead and measure any additional points, we want to do a check by tape measure to make sure that everything matches and we have an additional verification of distances on the ground. So choose the check by tape measure from the menu options and go ahead and pull out your steel tape. Get your rover ready to measure the first position on your tape. Sometimes that starts at zero. If your tape happens to be frayed, maybe you're going to measure a position at the first tenth of the tape. When you level the pole and you're ready to take the observation, hit the next button. Again, this is a control quality point, so we're going to average 10 positions together to make sure that we have a stable coordinate. When that's done, move your rover to the far end of the tape and measure a second point. In this case, we're going to measure a distance on the ground of exactly 100 feet offset from our starting at a tenth on the tape. Hit Next and we'll do our average of 10 measurements to get a stable coordinate on the other end of the tape that you're measuring. 
and when that's all finished it will come up with this report showing you the two points that you measured and most importantly how closely the distance you measured agreed with the distance on the tape. In this case we closed it to within a hundredth of a foot. Now we are ready to begin collecting features related to the crash scene. We're going to start by collecting the fog line down the side of the road. Go ahead and click on the code button and type in FL for the fog line code. We're going to make a line in real time out of this, so click on the line button here and we'll start a new line with this data collection. Because these points don't, don't need to be quite as precise as the control points, we will do a single shot observation on each one of these fog line points. As we move down the road along the fog line, level up your pole at each point and go ahead and click the, the shot button. At the end of the fog line, we're going to move over to collect the dash white line up the middle of the road. Go ahead and click on your code and type in the code for that type of line. Also, click on line to create a new line with the next sequence of data collection. Now we're doing a single shot observation on each of these points because it doesn't need to be quite as precise as a control quality point. If for whatever reason we did want any of these points to be more precise, we can always change the observation type from single to average. And then when we click on the shot button here, it will do what we're used to by taking 10 positions to average for a more accurate coordinate. So you can go ahead and use single shot or average for any point. But anything you do as a control quality point, you should be taking an average shot. And we will continue to walk up the road collecting the dash white lines for this next segment. When we reach the end of that segment, we move over and we're going to start another line to collect the next dash white line lane marker. In this case, we can just click on line and click it back to create a new line with the same code that we're using. We have finished collecting the roadway lines, and now we're going to come and collect the skid marks for the tractor trailer. As before, we will change our code to the appropriate item, and then we'll click on the line button to start a new line with this first skid mark. Now we'll move over to the other side of the skid mark and collect it back in the other direction. Now we'll go ahead and collect the skid marks from the car. Since it's all the same code, we can keep the code set here and simply toggle the line button to get a new line for the car's skid marks.
Now we will go ahead and collect the final resting position of the tires of both the vehicle and the semi-truck. Since these are just points instead of lines, we're going to turn off our line and we're going to change our code to tire. Using a single shot still, we will collect the next few points at the location of the car's four tires. And then we will walk over and collect the location where the semi came to a rest. If that's all the data we need for this scene, then we're just about ready to go. We could at this point go over and try to close the scene, but if you do, you will be given a prompt to remind you of good practice. Just like with an optical survey, where you check your backsight before striking down your equipment, it's always a good idea with GNSS to check back to one of your original control points before you close the scene. To start a checkpoint measurement, Go to the main menu and choose Checkpoint. Or, from the map itself, tap and hold on the point that you want and select Checkpoint from the menu that pops up over here. Level the pole over the point, and when you're ready to take the observation, go ahead and hit the Shot button. Because this is a control quality observation, we're going to average our 10 positions together to get a good coordinate. And when that's all finished, it will automatically store the checkpoint and it will give you this report. What you want to pay attention to is these numbers down here. If everything is green, that means you have good closure on your checkpoint and you're ready to finish your survey. Before we close the scene, I want to point out that in this demonstration, we've shown you the minimum that is required for a good GNSS data collection on a scene. That is, we only took three control points and we only did one checkpoint. Depending on the scene, you may want to add additional control points, which you can easily do at any time by selecting the control point measurement type from the menu here and beginning a measurement. Level your pole over the point, and you can go ahead and collect any number of additional control points that you wish. Extra control points are good if you have a lot of optical work to do on a scene, and you'll be doing several station resections to establish your optical setup. Similarly, if you're doing UAV photogrammetry work, you may want to add extra control points to have lots of control points to use in your photogrammetry processing. Similarly, you can do additional checkpoints throughout the duration of the survey, not just at the end, in order to make sure everything is working well for you as you go along. Once you have enough data for the features and the control points and the checks in a scene, go ahead and close the scene and you're all done. Thank you for watching and stay safe out there.